Well, welcome, Jackie. It's great to have you uh, in my very unusual surroundings. These uh, daft, I th this I set this up for me live gigs, and that's really what it's for. Because um, we can't gig. Football, yep. football can go on to some extent, but it's also good to have guests here that I can talk to and people that I can talk to. And I've only really spoke to people that I know. I'm not really interested in, you know, star searching or, mm -hmm. or getting out and, you know, getting Martin Scorsese and stuff. So it's great to have you, first and foremost. A great honour to be in your attic. You know, <laughs> it's good to be here. No, it's great. And I think that particularly, you know, I haven't saw you for a wee while and for anybody that doesn't know that you and I have known one another for a few years. Um, so it's easy for me to sort of try and say what I know about Jackie McNamara, but much easier for you to say it. So, without getting too personal and without going uh, way, way back, give me a wee indication of, because you obviously your, pa your dad was mm -hmm. involved in football, yeah. and, and it'll be easy to talk about football, but I want to talk about Jackie McNamara. Um, um, so tell me a wee bit about you growing up a wee bit, and where you've grew up, you know, uh, and... What formed you a wee bit be before we we get to football, which is inevitable, we'll get there. Um, tell us a wee bit about who Jackie is. Uh, well, uh, started off, uh, lived in Cumbernauld. Right. Um, actually, where Gregory's girl, my house was right at the bottom of that pitch. Where the big school was? Yeah, uh, right opposite the school. Yeah. So if I had, we left there, obviously my dad was at Hibs. And we moved through to Edinburgh when I was eight, eight, eight year old. Um, if I'd stayed, obviously, I probably would have went to that high school. Yeah. Uh, we were there when we were filming Gregory's Girl, actually. And one of them had to take a retake because my wee brother was shouting because he seen an aeroplane. <laughs> and had to uh, reshoot one of the one of the scenes. But um, so that's where we started, and then I moved through to Edinburgh at eight. So there's you and who else? Uh, my older brother Stephen, he's a year and a half older. Right. And my younger brother Donny. Uh, he's like four years younger, so right. I was the middle child, Okay. the the mediator. Brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, I went through to Edinburgh, which was, to be fair, quite tough. Going For through. football reasons? Yeah, my dad was at Hibs. Ah, Hibs. Uh, was he, he was at Hibs before, and then we stayed at Cumbernauld, but they're travelling and we ended up, you know, he was, uh, he bought a pub and stuff, and moving, all the, moving us all through there at a, a young age, um, changing school. A new culture, salt and sauce. Uh, <laughs> exactly, aye. Uh, <laughs> just getting to all the change at that that time. But so you're only eight? Yep. Wow, well, that's a big change in it for yeah, an eight year old. Yeah, I just coming up nine. Uh, going into a new school, which was quite intimidating. Aye. Um, obviously, your dad playing for the Edinburgh team as well. Aye. I mean, and being called Jackie, it was, wasn't it easy. <laughs> aye. And did he, before he went to Hibs, had, he, had your dad been playing for other clubs before that? No, he started at, he started at Celtic uh, right. and he got a really bad injury. Right. Uh, and he, he ended up swapping with Pat Stanton. Pat Stanton went to Celtic from ah. Hibs and my dad went there and he always maintains that it was a physio and Hibs that saved his career because he'd, he'd one of the early ones to get a cruise ship, ACL. Wow. So uh, ah. they, they helped him and um, it was, you know, he had a really good career at Hibs and that's... Me growing up, that's where I kind of seen him most. I didn't really see him when he was playing with Celtic. I was too young, right, to remember him at Celtic. But you know, you know, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up Aye. to left Hibs, uh, so go and watch him every week. So, is your mum and dad? Are they were they were they Cumbernauld people? No, they were from um, Easterhouse. Oh, were they? Yeah, both they your were, mum and dad. Yeah, they've been with each other uh, from fourteen. Wow. Yeah, they married. My mum was seventeen, and she had my brother. They get married then. Right. Uh, I came along at, when she was 19. My dad was a year older than my mum. So they'd been with each other, yeah, from then and, uh, you know, right the way through. And so through, you've been through to Edinburgh and, and um, but I mean, I think, will you, I think with your dad, once you get in, I suppose anyway, and I don't know, you get into that line of, of, of your industry, your industry, which your dad shared, um, you, your expectations are, I suppose, that you can go anywhere really in it. You could be, even then, your dad and 
Paddy Crerand who we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier on. You guys, you know, Paddy Crerand talks about moving from Celtic down to Manchester United for 50 pence a week more. That you know, it's mental, I know. It's, uh, <coughs> but I think it's, it's always been the same, the career, because it is a short career. Aye. But you'd, and my, my dad always said that to me when I was growing up, you know, when I did start in the football, it's a short career, son, you know, it's like when your dad says something to you, aye, aye, very good, aye. you know what I mean, you're like, but it, it was. And it is, is he passionate, is your dad, is he passionate about his, fo his football, I mean, not that, nobody can ever force your way or push your way into something, but did he want you and your brothers to be footballers? He never pushed anything, you know, my older brother Stephen played boys club, but he wasn't, it wasn't his, he was never going to make it as a footballer. I think he'd probably uh, the first to say that. You know, he'd, he'd a, a real um, problem with vision. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, he we just you know, kick everything above the grass, Stephen. <laughs> Brilliant. That's he was uh, a dirty player. <laughs> and my younger brother, Donny, he got into the arts with dancing, which uh, came later on in his, you know, when he was a teenager. But that was just purely chasing his girlfriend uh, and going to the dancing with her and doing it himself. I always wanted to be a footballer, you know, I, I loved watching my dad playing and loved when the Hibs fans were singing his name, I, I always wanted to be... Was, uh, did your dad ever play a, a set alongside George Best, no? Yeah, I thought uh, that. He, uh, he actually, I met him, well, uh, he played my dad's testimonial as well. Brilliant. Uh, against Newcastle. Aye. But uh, he's, he's got some stories, as you probably imagine, with George at his time at Hibs. Uh, I can, I, and even when I think with, with your dad, because... I mean, I, I'm totally, this is a real shot in the darkness, but it was funny how you hear things about, like, like hearing about your dad, because I'd always heard your dad was a right strong socialist. He is, he was, I mean, he still is, he's, you know, that was a big thing at, um, at Celtic at the time, it was the, the front of the papers was Jack the Red, you know, the communist. I, I thought that, aye. Uh, and he's always kind of been that way, you know, uh, a, a real socialist, my dad. I mean, nothing wrong with that, you know, and, and I funny and I had a guy here earlier on who I'd said to him to try and pop down and say hello to you because he's Peter McNamara and Peter was the first guy that I interviewed for my drink his chin wag was to try out the room and to mm -hmm. try out, but also because he's a friend, but he's redder than a baboon's balls, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad's, my dad's a bit, I think it came sort of from my grandpa, uh, who was, you know, in the, 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 the trade union man and he worked uh, the papers and he worked in the, the shipyards as an engineer, Aye. and he, he moved down to, to London, to Fleet Street, to work in the, the press with the papers, uh, wow. under Maxwell, and he was a big trade union man, and so I think when my dad and my, un my other bro uncles, you know, Aye. my dad had three other brothers, but they were very much into that socialist side. And was it frowned upon then, you do you think, socialism? Uh, and football yeah, anyway? Yeah, I mean... I think so, especially there, and the fact that it made the paper, and Aye. you know, I remember him. Uh, he, he, my dad told the story like he went back to my grandpa and said about the, the front of the paper, and uh, so I think it was at the time when the guy Robin Cousins came out as as gay, Aye. and he said to my dad, "Look, you know, I'm in the front of the paper." My dad said, well, "It could be worse, son. You could be." Another story with Aye. Robin Cousins Aye. exploiting the man's sexuality. Yeah. And do you think? Yeah. Um, I mean, so you as a wee guy, you and your your two brothers, so it's a right male house yeah. with your mammy. And, and, it's, and so for a young guy, what's it? I'm trying to, so that we can understand who Jackie McNamara is, did you feel, was it just natural thing to be in the spotlight? Did it, for instance, do you think it made it any easier when you were young? that when you went on to be a football player, that because you had been exposed to that with your dad at Hibs and, and you know? I think it, it changed so much, just I think it was a start to change, whereas, you know, when I was fortunate enough to, to kind of get my move, I hated, I hated the spotlight. I hated, uh, really shy. I was quite uh, withdrawn. You see the interviews when I first, at Dunfermline and at Celtic, when I first went to Celtic, I was terrified of doing interviews. Aye. I just so uncomfortable and can imagine right? even going into certain rooms with people I didn't know or having to go and do a speech and totally out of my comfort zone. You did know, they get, did they, any media training or did they? No, did, no, not then. It was just you know, uh, I'd been there at Celtic uh, 
that first season. I came in in October with Tommy, which was probably one of my uh, most favourite uh, seasons. You know, my first, and I hadn't lost a game in the league. Right. And we lost the league to Rangers. And I won the Young Player of the Year uh, my first season when I came in. And Rangers won the league that day with Gascoigne when they, uh. they, they beat Aberdeen. Gascoigne got the Player of the Year. And they interviewed me. It was it was Ken Douglas who gave me an award, who was my hero growing up and played with my dad as well. And I was fortunate enough to play under him as well at Celtic later on with John, after John Barnes left. But he gave me an award and I seen the video back and I was like, oh, what was I doing? You know what I mean? Because that day, like, it was the day the Rangers won the league against Aber home to Aberdeen and they asked me a question and, the, and the, I think it was Chick Young. And they gave me a award and they said, oh, Tommy Burns wasn't here, Gaffer wasn't watching the game, he was at Lock Home. And, and I was like, I was, a, I was away jet skiing. I was like, what with this? <laughs> you know what I mean? I just didn't know what, just didn't know what to speak, Aye. I was just out of my comfort zone. And I was like, what am I, what am I doing? Aye, well, that's, 